Hey and welcome! I'm Hammy, and in this latest Overwatch Tours video, we're taking you on a journey through the lore and easter eggs of Necropolis. A new elimination map with Overwatch's anniversary update, Necropolis holds a significance in the Overwatch story through being a refuge to two old soldiers who have teamed up once again, with their next destination unknown at this point. Time to run you through the map's lore, background, and cool easter eggs and details. Firstly, let's take you through the background and lore of Necropolis. Nestled in the outskirts of what presumably is the Giza Plateau in the Overwatch world, Necropolis is a beautiful map full of interesting lore on Arna Amari and a guest of hers. Not far from the shining lights of the pyramid that dominates the skyline of the Temple of Anubis in Overwatch, a lot of the area's ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and similar, including the little joke of the Horde logo from World of Warcraft, are similar to that of Anubis. A necropolis meaning-wise is a designed cemetery with elaborate tomb monuments. The name stems from the ancient Greek necropolis, literally meaning a city of the dead. Now the Giza necropolis in our world of ancient Egypt is one of the oldest and probably the most well-known in the world. As the Great Pyramid of Giza is very iconic, one of the seven wonders of the world, the necropolis also includes the Sphinx and many other monuments. Giza's necropolis has many other features besides pyramids. Aside from the pyramids, which were reserved for the burial of pharaohs, the Egyptian necropoli included mastabas, a typical pharaoh and royal tomb of the early dynastic period, before pyramids actually became more popular. Now, mastabas are interesting, as necropolis, our map, shares a lot of similarities with them in its visual design and construction. In fact, Arna may well be living in an abandoned dig site of a mastaba. The word mastaba comes from the Arabic word for a bench of mud, Longer than they were high, inside these chambers, they were deeply dug into the ground and lined with stone and bricks. The burial chambers were cut deep until they passed bedrock even, with a second hidden chamber called a serdup, from the Persian word for cellar. This was used to store anything that may have been considered useful for the comfort of the deceased in the afterlife. Beer, cereal grain, precious items, clothes and more. And perhaps this is what one of the spawn rooms on the level is, with this blocked off entrance. The typical cut step design of a mastaba also looks very similar to the back wall of Necropolis. As we delve into the centre of the map, we see where Arna, working as a mercenary known as the Shrike, has been hiding out for the time since she came back on the map. In one corner of the room we see biotic synthesis equipment, grenades, flasks of materials, what might be a centrifuge for spinning the mixture, and finally containers and vials for her darts for her rifle. There's lots of ex-Overwatch equipment here, we even see the rifle perched up here with more grenades and her sleep dart gun. Where did she manage to get it all from? With a food preparation area and even a little table for Anna's characteristic cup of tea, she's got everything she needed to be able to hide out here for a while unnoticed. The centrepiece of this room is an intelligence or monitoring station which has three very interesting screens up. The first is Reaper and his whereabouts. There are several points on the globe marked here, some of these we're familiar with, some of them we're not so familiar with what Reaper may have been up to. Los Angeles, of course, in America on the west, is where Gabriel Reyes came from, the melting pot as described in a blog a long time ago on the Overwatch website. So perhaps maybe that's where he was in reflections, when we saw Reaper in this image watching on his relatives or family of some description, we speculate. Well, what was Reaper doing in Numbani? That is the spot on Africa, as also shown in Soldier 76's Origins trailer. Could it be something to do with Doomfist, perhaps? As for the point in Spain, well, that could be Watchpoint Gibraltar and the events of Recall, of course, where the attack was unsuccessful when Talon tried to take the list of all Overwatch agents. Winston got involved, of course, there. As for Iraq, well, we could take a guess at Oasis, and there's a bit more backing up for this one. An interaction with Sombra on the level, she says, what are we doing here, boss? And he says he needs to visit an old friend. Now remember, of course, Oasis is a place of unfettered science. Science almost without limits, sometimes without moral boundaries. Maybe there's somebody there who's helping Reaper with his condition, but who could that be? Finally, we've got a point that could be Finland, but I'm guessing maybe it could actually be Russia. Just depends on where the dot is landing and the drawing of the map. This would make sense when we look at the next screen, which has Volskaya Industries footage on it. Now, with access to the satellite-style view, the schematic-style view that we saw in Infiltration, we also see Reaper from Sombra's hack security camera footage and the door Sombra scene too. Anna and her guest both know what Reaper, Widowmaker and Sombra presumably have been up to in Russia at Volskaya Industries. Whether they know of Sombra's duplicity in that short though, we don't know just yet. On the final screen, we have a monitor feed looking out towards Giza, perhaps for intruders or incoming people. 
We find out where this is linked to if we actually head to the roof of this building, where we can see a little watch station set up on the roof with a telescope, presumably projecting the feed, and of course, while Anna's keeping watch, she has to have a cup of tea. Now on the back little rampway between Anna's base of operations and her lookout point, we see her bed and some touching reminders of her past life. Firstly, this photo of Jack, Anna and Gabriel that we've seen in Old Soldiers at the end of that comic. A picture of the earlier days of Overwatch from Anna's origin trailer that also hangs above Torbjorn's fireplace and reflections. This image is clearly sentimental to a number of the original Overwatch strike team. And then, a photo of her and her daughter, Faria, that we see in her origin trailer as well. Last but not least, in the middle of her bed, there's the little hologram of Faria Amari that we see in Anna's emote when she's thinking of her daughter, Farah. Note the sleep gun next to her bed too. Anna's always prepared. On the other side of Necropolis, we actually see that Anna has a visitor and who that is. Soldier 76, or Jack Morrison, ex-commander of Overwatch, is reunited with Anna, his old second in command, in the events of the Old Soldiers comic, and is now presumably staying with her in Egypt for the time being. When we see them both looking somewhat forlorn in reflections, of course the Christmas comic, where we see a slice of life of what various heroes and villains are up to at this point in time, with soldiers staring at a photo of who knows who. Perhaps they're in this base, a stone's throw from Giza. Aside his old Overwatch sleeping bag and kit bag, spare biotic field generators and pulse rifle right by his camp bed, Morrison's travelling pretty light. Bar a dumbbell that he's got around for some exercise from somewhere presumably, there's a bottle of what might be spirits and a newspaper talking about a global hacking spree. Perhaps hinting at how Morrison is dealing with his view of the world currently. Maybe teaming up with Anna again can help him move forward and perhaps complete or get closer to resolution around his vendetta to discover who brought down Overwatch and why. Finally, a little bit of speculation on the lore now that Necropolis offers us. As we know this is set after infiltration, where will Anna and Jack go next, and how long can they remain undiscovered here? Does the tracked vehicle that we see looking down from the map in the middle of the sand mean that perhaps they've been discovered already? We know that Anna and Morrison are now tracking Reaper. Where will he strike or go next? What has he been up to in the places he's visited, particularly those ones that we don't know about, like Oasis and Los Angeles? Do Reaper's movements have anything to do with Sombra's similar map that we see in Castillo? Is this a Talon operation or something different? Thanks very much for tuning in to this Overwatch lore tour of Necropolis's lore and Easter eggs. If you like Overwatch lore and story, please check out all my explanations, analysis and speculation on heroes, maps, comics, animated shorts and of course their interactions and voice lines in the playlist below. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon who help me keep making longer more edited lore videos for you. If you'd like to see how you can support from just a dollar a month, please take a click through the link here too. Cheers for tuning in, I've been Hammy, take it easy.